So Morgan is project designer, uh, environmental education at Global Action Plan and co-director of the Glacier Trust, a charity which enables vulnerable Himalayan communities in Nepal to adapt to climate change. Um, thanks, Morgan. Uh, we look forward to hearing you speak. Thanks, Hi, everyone. Um, and thanks, Naomi. That was a, that was a wonderful speech. It was great to hear it. And I feel like I've got a hard act to follow now. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to talk about um, going back to normal. Um, I'm just going to use this background as a way to put slides up. Um, so the emphasis is on the normal. It's kind of going back to normal. Do we really want to go back to that? Um, at the beginning of the pandemic, some of you probably have saw um, a few things being shared up on the internet. And this, this bit of graffiti really grabbed my eye. Um, I can't read it, but this is, this is what it says in English. This is how you translate it. It's, it says, we can't go back to normal because the normal we had is precisely the problem. And it's been translated into a number of languages and we've seen it popping up in different places. So I've, um, I've written something about kind of where we are um, now, um, where we've come from and, and where we might be going. Um, so I'm just gonna cover that now and um, look forward to the questions afterwards. What was life like before the pandemic? What were our normal lives? Um, just two months ago, we were happily traveling on buses and trains and walking down busy pavements. We were off to school every day, or in my case, off to, off to work in an office and everything was busy. And then maybe after school, we'd go around to see our friends, um, play, play maybe in their gardens or just in their houses with them. Or we'd go to a dance class or maybe do some sports or maybe go to the park. And then on the weekends, we might go to the cinema or go shopping, or we might jump in the car and head off to see some family members in different parts of the country. And, you know, maybe, maybe go on holiday um, every now and again as well. And so that's what was going on. And, you know, there was lots of nice things happening in our lives and nice things that we're looking forward to going back to. Um, but while all that was happening, we were also kind of had this kind of nagging sense and kind of awareness growing of the things which aren't so good. Some quite rubbish things were happening as well. In the world and some of them happened to us actually and things like strange things really um like when you go onto the onto social media um you see an advert every 10 seconds i mean it's not really that normal that every 10 seconds someone's going to shout at you to buy something or to download something or to subscribe to something but that's what was happening and then we're also seeing things like in australia there were those huge fires right across the country and in the uk we had flooding and storms and then we'd also see things like in northern India, massive droughts happening. And these are all things which we thought, well, things, you know, our normal life isn't really that normal. And there's things we're really uncomfortable about. Um, and we also saw that there's more and more people were appeared to be homeless. And there was around four million children living in relative poverty and thousands of families becoming reliant on food banks and that number going up. And we also knew when we looked at the wider world that more than half of the population of the world were living on less than $7.40 a day. That's 4.2 billion people living on just six pounds a day. So that's six pounds to buy food, to buy clothes, to buy furniture, maybe to get a haircut, maybe to travel, to pay rent. Six pounds a day, half, half the world's population. So we thought, you know, our life's quite normal, but there's a lot of things troubling us in the world. And then wham, we got hit, didn't we, by this new word appeared in our lives, coronavirus, and another one called COVID, and it kind of kind of turned our lives upside down a bit, like this, and everything got a bit strange, and we weren't really sure what was happening. And first of all, people were just talking about coronavirus, there was just a few people talking about it, and then within a few days, really, everyone was talking about it, I'll go back to normal, way around. And so we're living in quite an extraordinary period of time right now in this, in this moment. And this is something that there'll be films made, there'll be documentaries made, songs will be written, poems will be written, there'll probably be computer games made about this. And children in the future, they'll be having history lessons talking about the global pandemic and how life was. And they'll be learning about how the virus originated and how it spread through the world. And the other thing that will happen is that young people now, when they grow up and they have children, or maybe even grandchildren, they'll be asked by those children, what was it like? Tell me about 
the pandemic and the lockdown? How did it feel? What was it? What was going on there? And I wonder what you'll tell them and how you'll, you know, what you're learning now, and what you're coming to realize about yourself and about the world as a result of this period, this extraordinary period that we're living in. And you'll be asked questions like what actually happened and why did the schools close? And you'll explain and you'll explain about the bravery of the doctors and nurses and the care workers who actually saved hundreds and thousands of people's lives. And you'll talk about how governments try to cope and how businesses try to cope. And they'll also ask you how it made you feel. And you'll answer that by saying, well, it made me sad and, and really worried and frustrated and annoyed, and sometimes bored as well um, by being stuck at home all the time. And then they'll ask you, how did it go back to normal? What happened next? And you'll say, normal? It didn't go back to normal. We had to, the pandemic made us stop and it made us stop and think. And so we stopped and we thought. And we had a real think about actually what sort of normal do we want to go back to? Do we want to have all the bad things or do we want the nice things? And we started thinking about, well, what's been amazing about this period of time is that we've really noticed how powerful and how strong our communities are and how much kindness and generosity and sharing that's been going on. And that people haven't been as competitive as they normally are. We're not, they're not really trying to show us how many um, brilliant pairs of trainers they've got or what amazing holiday they're going on. They're not trying to be really popular. They're just trying to be friends and help each other. And that's been a really amazing experience. And so when we think about going back to normal, we're thinking about, well, we want the nice things to come back, but we don't want any other rubbish things. We don't really want climate change to be continuing to wreck people's lives all around the world. We don't want our rainforests to be destroyed or our oceans to be filled up with plastic. And so we're doubling down on our efforts to create more action to make these things happen. We've heard today lots of stuff about people talking about the power, where power lies and that governments need to act. I think in this moment, we're probably going to come together and think, you know, this time the governments need to make real progress. They've made some progress, but, but we need real big change. And we're getting some hope and signs that that might be happening. There's research saying that 68% of people are not going to continue to purchase things in the same way as they did before. And we're seeing that the Spanish government, who to try and address poverty in the pandemic, have created a basic income that everybody in the country gets to help them through it. And they've decided they're going to make that permanent. It's not going to just be for the pandemic, it's permanent. And that's really exciting to see. And in Milan, they've just committed, I think it was just yesterday, to turning 35 kilometres of road um, into cycleways. So cars will be banned from those 35 kilometres. Because they're responding, they're, people are realising the difference that having quiet roads is having on their well-being, And they're loving the lack of the, the reduction in air pollution, the reduction in noise. And so the, the Milan government is, is following that. And we hope that others will follow that as well. So when, we, when we're asked in the future by our children and grandchildren about the coronavirus and the effect it had, we'll probably tell them something like this. We'll tell them that coronavirus taught us something that the environmental crisis was trying to teach us, but we weren't quite understanding yet. And it's this. It taught us that what's really important isn't the pursuit of money and stuff. It isn't about being better than everyone else or being the most popular person or having the most likes on Instagram. And it isn't about having the most expensive clothes and goods. It taught us that what's important is friendship and community and family, about being and connecting with nature, playing with our friends, being outside, enjoying the wonders of the world. It taught us what's important is sharing, kindness, community, generosity and love. We'll tell our children and grandchildren that we didn't go back to the old normal because the old normal was precisely the problem. We worked together to create a new normal, one that was organised not around money, but around life. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan.